Hey everybody, it's Chris and I'm back to do another project with you today. Um, today we're gonna make candle holders and we are working on a three quarter inch piece of MDF that Jim has cut out for me into the shape of a hexagon. And we're gonna do the Shelly art style with the bloom technique on this guy. Um, and this is what our finished project will look like. Um, today we're gonna use different colors than what I had used on this one, but I did wanna show you what it looks like when it's com um, actually completed. So I did paint this with a Shelly Art style, and then after it dried, Jim drilled a hole for me, and this is a one and five eighths inch hole, and then I um, also resined this. So after this portion of the video where I show you how to paint it, I'll actually show you how to resin it and finish it too. Um, these are some little tea light candles that I purchased at Michael's, and they fit really nicely down inside there. So this is what the project looks like, and let's get started on creating the bloom. So as I said, this is a um, hexagon that Jim had cut out of three quarter inch MDF. You do want three quarter inch because you want it to be thick enough so that you can still drill a hole and put that tea light into it. So I think that's probably about a half inch, or excuse me, um, a quarter to three eighths inch deep probably is what the hole is that is created for the tea light, just so that it sits kind of down inside there. So today we're gonna use Cadmium Red Deep, and I'm also using the Golden Pyrrole Orange. The Golden is one of the um, high flow acrylics. And then I've also got some Cadmium Yellow Light. The red and the yellow are tube paints that I've mixed with the pouring medium. And I'm also using some um, Perlex Aztec Gold to add a little bit of bling to it. And today I'm actually gonna use a black cell activator. So kind of what the, I'm, going for what I'm hoping to kind of create is something that kind of looks like a ladybug if you will um, with the red and the orange and the yellow I'm hoping to kind of create like a ladybug look um, that's kind of what my thought is we'll see if that works otherwise hopefully it's just really pretty but that's the thought so I have my pillow paint here and I'm using the Valspar 2000 paint today so I'm just going to go ahead and pour a puddle in the center here I haven't done anything to help to prep these MDF rounds. So we're just gonna put the paint on it directly. I haven't done any primer or anything like that. Um, we'll start with that much and then I may have to add a little bit more just to make sure that the edges are covered, but we'll see how that does for us. And I'm going to start with the red. So I'm gonna put a nice little bit of red in the middle. And I'll put a link to my original video that has all the measurements for the, um, cell activator as well as the pouring medium so that you'll see all those recipes. And then next I wanna put in some of that Aztec Gold. Now this is a Perlex powder, so it was activated, the powder was activated with some pouring medium, which you'll see in the first video that I linked to. I really love this gold, it's such a pretty, pretty color. And then I think we're gonna do, I think we'll do the orange next in the middle here. And then we'll stop with the yellow on the top of it. And we'll see what we get. I've never done these colors before, so kind of stepping out of my box with my normal purples and pinks and blues. So hopefully this doesn't let me down. And I think, I don't know for sure if I've ever used a black cell activator when I've done this particular technique with you guys. So um, I have done it in the past on projects that I've done on my own and it Actually, it looks really cool. So just putting my black cell activator in the center here. And then I'm gonna take this aside. I have a feeling we might get some green here and I'm gonna blow this real quick. Not sure that it was a good idea to do the black on top of the yellow because I have a feeling we might get a little bit of a green tint, so hopefully it'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and pour just a little bit more white on here while that pillow pops back underneath my colors there because I wanna make sure that I have enough to get around and off of the edges so that the edges are covered nicely. All right. You can see we have some really cool cells there though. And I do have a little bit here that I think I wanna blow out just a tiny bit more. I might turn this just so that I can blow it in a direction that's not as pretty. Okay. 
All right, and the pillow has popped back. So let me see if I can give you guys a close up of this so you can kind of see the really cool cells that we have going on there. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start tilting this. I just have a little Dixie cup underneath my round here. And what I wanna do is tilt this off and I'm hoping to get my color to go over the edge so that it kind of sticks and so that we get some nice corners. And then I'm gonna bring it back down to the opposite direction. And just slowly tilting. And you can see my colors going off of the edges, which is what I wanted. And while I'm down this way, I think I'll go ahead and tilt it off this direction as well. There we go. And then I'm just gonna tilt it back a little bit and see if I can go ahead and tilt off of this corner too while I've got the paint down on this area. There we go. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and let the paint flow down to this side of the candle holder. These are very pretty colors. It is not, it's definitely not ladybug looking, but it's very pretty. May have to work on my ladybug pour, huh? It kind of looks like my orange is not as prevalent. The red is definitely prevalent. So um, if you'll remember, if you do the Shelly art, the colors that you put down first and last are the colors that will be more prominent in your finished product. All right, I'm just gonna go off of this corner here. Just trying to hang on to it so I don't mess up the sides of the candle holder here. And I wanna make sure that my paint is flowing over the edges. Now I did not tape the backs of the candle holders because um, my thought is that once everything is dried, um, what I'll do is I'll just sand the back sides of these. I think I'm gonna see if I can cover this down here just a tiny bit more and not have quite so much white showing. And I am gonna have to touch up my edges just a little bit, but that's okay. That's what a palette knife is for. Plus this will help cover this one edge over here. So I kind of feel like that orange sort of went to kind of a coral color. It's actually very pretty. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it back and kind of center my design in the center there. And then I will show you how it looks. All right, there we go. Wow, that, those are really pretty colors. My red definitely went pink probably because I put it on a white background. I may have to try this on a black background. I think that might look actually kind of cool. All right guys, so I thought I would show you how this is gonna turn out with the black base on it. And I'm not actually using house paint. I'm using my um, Flow Acrylic from Michaels with my pouring medium mixed into it. But we're gonna use the same colors that we used with the white base and see what a difference it makes if it um, really does help kind of keep the colors more accurate, I guess. So starting again with the red and then putting in some of that gold. And then we're gonna layer on the orange. And then we'll finish off with the yellow. I think it's important to keep the colors the same as we did on the white, just so that we can really see what a difference it makes. Even though that yellow and black cell activator probably were not the best combo, but we're gonna find out. Okay, so putting the black cell activator on the top of this one, and then I'm gonna take this off and blow it real quick. And I can tell that my black paint is a lot thinner. <laughs> you can see that my um, my blow kind of blew that black paint right off. Um, I think I kind of want to blow this way just a tiny bit more. But definitely have a lot of cells in this one. 
So I'm just gonna let that sit there for a second and see, um, I can tell that this is kind of dented in a little bit, probably because the paint was so much thinner and I probably blew a little bit too hard since the paint was thinner. So I'm gonna let that pop back up before we start to tilt. So let's hang on just a second and see if we can get that to come back up. In the meantime, I'm gonna pour just a little more black here on the edges to make sure that we cover. So it definitely has a different look than the white, doesn't it? It's definitely deeper. All right, let's see if this little guy is gonna move for us. I can tell that the center is not really moving. So I'm hoping that that will break loose. Let's see if we can go off this way first and see if it'll start to slide. I have to say though, that gold is really, really pretty in that black. And I think the cells really spread a lot further too with this paint being thinner. So I'm gonna tilt this back and we'll go off this way with it. And a little bit further to get the sides covered. There we go. And then I'm gonna kinda of come back, tilt down. Now the whole thing is moving for us. Well, I still did not achieve the ladybug, <laughs> but I have to say that the colors are very pretty together. I kind of like the red and the black and the gold together. That's really a pretty color combo. And I'm just gonna kind of tilt off here. So when you're working with a hexagon, um, you know, usually with the Shelly Art, we go corner to corner, back to the middle, and then corner to corner. But when you have the hexagon, it's a little bit harder to do the corner to corner, so. I kind of just tilt whichever way the paint is kind of going for me. And I want to hold on to this a little bit lower so that I can get that one corner covered down here on the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see the sheen of that gold. Holy cow, that's pretty though. And I kind of want to go over with my colors. There we go. And then we'll pull it back towards the middle. Okay, so I have to say, I really like the black background. Holy cow, that's pretty. So I'm just gonna pull this back down a little bit. I think maybe if my paint was a little, the black paint was a little bit thicker, I wonder if my cells would have done a little bit better. Cause I feel like my cells kind of got blown out and they're kind of small but it is very, very pretty colors for sure. I think I definitely wanna try some other colors with the black pillow. All right, I kinda of wanna go down here to this bottom because I don't feel like there's a lot of cells going on down there. And see if I can tilt off some of the color there a little bit. Get a little bit more interest going on that, that side. There we go. I kind of stretched them out a little bit and they're a little bit kind of wonky now, but here's the thing. The candle's gonna go in the center of that. So I don't necessarily want all my cool stuff in the center where it's gonna get drilled out. So that looks pretty doggone cool, guys. Definitely gonna have to do some more black. All right, so stay tuned and I'll show you how to finish this with resin so that you have a completed project. Okay, I thought I'd show you guys real quick how I resin the little candle holders. So this is dried for several weeks now. Um, I wasn't concerned about the bottom of it because my plan is that after the resin is dry, I'm just gonna go ahead and sand this down and then it'll look just fine anyway. So we've already pre-drilled the hole and 
they will get a little tea light candle and we measured this and it's one and a half inches. So we knew that the hole had to be slightly bigger than that. So Jim used a one and five eighths inch Forstner bit and you can see that the candle sits in there very nicely. And then he also put a little hole in the bottom of it for me, just in case I do get resin down in the bottom of it. Um, if it does start to pool, I can, hopefully it'll run out of there or I can take a toothpick and make sure that I clean that area out too. So I'm just gonna set it over one of my little Dixie cups here, just to keep it up off the surface. And then I have my resin already pre-mixed. Um, I'm using the Artist Resin from Counterculture DIY. It's probably one of my favorite resins to use for projects like this. So they have some other project, or excuse me, they have some other products um, in different styles of resin, but the Artist Resin I find is probably my go-to for a lot of different things. So the resin, what the resin will do for this project is it will make it heat safe up to 500 degrees. So I feel a little bit better about giving someone a candle holder if it has resin on it. So I just went ahead and poured some of the resin on there. And now I'm just taking my little popsicle stick and kind of spreading it out because I want a nice even coat. So not only will this make the candle holder heat safe, it will also, um, you know, it'll add that protective coating to the paint, but it will also bring out that really beautiful shimmery shine that we're looking for, um, for it to come bring those little paints back to life that we used in the project. So if you'll remember, we um, when I do the Shelly Art technique, I like to use a lot of the iridescence and the shimmery paints and such like that. So this will really bring those colors and the shimmer back to life again. So I'm just making sure that I have everything coated on the surface. And then I'm just gonna use my finger to run around the sides of it to make sure that I have it um, evenly coated on the sides too, because that will make it look nice as well. And actually I probably should have done that before I did the top. So let me see if I can get the light reflected in here. You can see there's like some copper right here that just really pops out when you get the light on it. And another good thing too is to look at this in the light, make sure you've got it in a nice light. I like to kind of look down across the top surface of my projects when I'm doing resin, just to make sure that I really do have a nice coating on there. But I'm just gonna use my finger and just go along the sides of it. And this is what I do when I resin my coasters, when I resin Lazy Susans, um, I just use my finger to kind of glide along the sides of it. And then that way you can kind of feel um, that it'll be nice and slick and you know that you have it resined nicely. Now, I didn't seem to get any resin down in the center of the candle holder, which I do think I do want to put just a little bit in there. So I didn't pour enough on there that it actually pulled down inside. But I'm kind of thinking that it would be good to have a little bit down in there just to kind of help with that heat safety part that I was talking about. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of resin down here in this cup holder part, and that will help to protect that as well. But my thought is that most people, you know, the um, candle that I'm going to give people with this will have the little candle cup. So I don't think we need to be super concerned with that because it's not like the candle will be in direct contact with the wood. So I think, but by putting that little bit of resin down inside there, I feel a little bit better about it being a little bit more heat safe, I guess. Okay, so this is looking really great. I just wanna make sure that I have enough on my edges so that it doesn't pull back as it dries. And then the last thing that I want to do with this is just to um, use my heat gun and I just wanna pop the bubbles on the surface because sometimes you can get some little bubbles with resin. So I just wanna make sure that those bubbles are popped so that I have a nice clean bubble free surface and finish on it. So I'm just gonna use my heat gun real quick. And I'm just gonna pop the bubbles. I don't have a lot of bubbles, but there's a few there. All right guys, so that finishes up the little candle holder. Um, this will sit aside um, for It'll be dry to the touch in 24 hours. In 72 hours, it will be completely cured and heat safe up to 500 degrees. All right, so that is how we're gonna finish off the candle holders. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.